This is a 1985 Peugeot 205 diesel with over 200,000 miles. It's one I've bought recently for £500, although as you would expect it has a few issues, but it's still driving. It still actually has a few weeks MOT left on it. I'm just going to give a wee quick look around the car to show its current condition. Um, I think it's all very, very much fixable. Uh, it'll be an interesting car to see tidied up. So the paintwork is the first thing, as you can notice, is very faded and pink. That's quite usual for old Peugeots of this age. They just the paint did that, especially red. Green was different. Um, the driver, or the passenger side door, uh, needs a door handle. It wouldn't open from the inside or outside. Um, I went looking in to find out what was wrong. The key barrel was jammed and the exterior door handle didn't work, so it wouldn't open. Um, but it does open now from the inside. The window is, the window mechanism has been taken out. So the door opened up. The window mechanism's out of it, as is the glass, but it shouldn't be too hard to put back together once there's a door handle. The other door's all open fine. The previous owner has added some sort of aftermarket central lagoon from the 80s. It's quite interesting to see that these huge big buttons or clips. Um, it doesn't work, but it's interesting to see. Around the back of the car, the tailgate has a few wee spots of rust. Up around here. And the paint's faded, but it's generally okay. The boot does open, but the struts are a wee bit weak. Um, yeah, the previous owner had some interesting ways to fix problems rather than a new bulb for the original light. There's been some extra light fitting has been put into the boot and then it's broke. So that was a bit strange. Uh, these plastics have done a strange dusty flaky thing. I'm not sure what's going on but they, they do react well to the heat gun. Once they're cleaned up, they get that dust off and then use a heat gun, to, it restores the colour. It must have been UV light damage from sitting out in the sun. The rear window is probably not going to work. With that salt uh, wee connection has fell off. But a few bits of rust on around the boot lid, but it won't be going out in the winter anymore, so it shouldn't, the rust won't spread. Um, Nasty wee bit. And there's a few bits up around the roof. The sunroof's not opening, and I don't know what's lurking in here. Be nice to get a roof skin off a non sunroof model and remove the sunroof, although they were a nice sunroof when they did work. The glass panels on the outside so it doesn't rub any headroom. Inside the car, the back seats don't look like anyone has ever sat in them. Um, inside the car, I don't know if that's a kitchen door handle for a kitchen unit. It doesn't look standard. I can't remember co 9s back in the day having that. Grab handle must have been an optional extra for the higher up models. And this is one of the many notes the previous owner has put in the car. Please don't, don't open window. Mechanism must be broke. Yep. But you did get ashtrays, which are the same shape as the 305 ashtray. This here is just a, a small square of the bodywork that I did try to uh, put some polish to see how it would look. Um, and it has polished up nicely. Getting to the front, the car must have had seat covers on from a very early age. It's currently got Lidl's finest ultimate speed, but the driver's side bolster is like new, there's no there's no rips or tears to any part of the seats at all, which is impressive considering the car's mileage. Um, yeah, the door on the passenger side is disassembled at the moment, and uh, yeah, I, I did have to hot wire the car after. On the night I got it, the key barrel jammed up, and two o five is the first car I ever figured out how to hot wire because I had one before and the key barrel jammed, so that's how that's working at the moment. Inside, there's another note. 
of instructions how to start. The key bar spring wasn't returning, so if you turned the key on, started the car, the starter was still running unless you manually brought the key bar back. There's also another one. Lock the car from the passenger side. That that note doesn't. It it wouldn't lock from the passenger side. Um, the dashboard is very much a collection of old 80s Peugeot parts. These are 305 stocks, 305 steering wheel, an instrument cluster that looks very like a 305, although it is different. Them buttons are straight out of the 305. Most of the style is very much 305. Um, I have some quirks, this ashtray is broke. Don't think that's the original radio, but it does have a CD input, which is very high tech. Uh, yeah, I, I damaged this here. Key, the, the aperture that the key goes into, I'm trying to get the old bar out. Um, so I, I knew it was going okay. The previous owners added a intermittent wiper delay control. Among other things, there's some strange wiring going on down here. Um, but that's here and there. The glove, the glove box shows another interesting addition for the glove box light. I have a collection of we have a collection of bits and pieces that have possibly fell out off over the years. Um auxiliary in jacks there and also there. I don't know why they were added or how they if they work with this radio. Not something they need. But it does have a glove box lid. Which would have been an option. Some of the cheaper 205s just didn't even have a lid. Although it would have been a more expensive version with a key here. This is the sunroof. The handle here has broke off. Um, there's a vacuum. The vacuum system pressurized this seal. That's how it sealed up. If I recall. This one's just not working at all. I'm not sure what's going on. be interesting to see it out. To see how the rust is on the on the on the roof skin, but we have I'm up reading light on a overhead light. Some visors is a wee small rip in this side. It's not too bad. This this bit of trim is is a disaster. It's all cracked and broken apart. Despite the owner's well, previous owner's best ability to stick it back together, I would like to try and get another trim like that but it is tricky because only the base models had this style of instrument cluster GTIs had a slightly different one and so it's a different piece of trim for them and most of the one, phase 1 205s remaining are GTIs the gear lever can disintegrate Here. there's a new track rod in and then there's a storage box, which is quite a good size. We're having a wee look underneath the car, and it doesn't look too bad considering it's a 1985 with over 200,000 miles. CV boots on both sides are in really good condition. There's no rips or tears, and rubber still is flexible. Um, the, st the lower wishbones, there's no play. I uh, had a pry bar in them earlier on, there was no movement. Um, all the, the, the dust covers for the track rod end and the ball joints. Both sides are in good condition. The hubs, there's no rust. Even the suspension struts have no rust. There's no, generally no rust on any of the components here. Which is quite impressive considering I've just been underneath the Honda Jazz for a few months sorting its rust out and it was a completely different story. This is very tidy. Um, the wishbones are quite quite funny at how small they, the wee bushes are in these, um, but there's no play in them. Uh, there's no play in this still there's a tiny bit. Might be a burn. Let's see. Track it in. Some some play there. Not sure where. Not in that direction anyhow. Um, this stop top is still moving freely. This is the uh, 
the model with no power steering. Um, on the other side, it's probably the same. It hasn't got much. This is the other side now. A bit of a night up there. The right here is damaged. It's not bad, it's moving freely. There's no play on this side. Uh, the, the lower valance, there's there's bolts or fixtures missing from, from it hanging down on this side but the other side it's not too bad. Um, uh, the grey bumper has I think it was black when they were new sort of fallen down here but that shouldn't be too hard to sort out. I can't remember how these were held on but there's something going on there with the bumper it needs to be sorted out. There's not too many signs of leaks, there's just some some sort of leakage going on around maybe the gearbox, drive shaft seals, but that has possibly been good for the subframe as it has been well coated and oiled. Um, the usual gear linkages are all quite loose, leading to the trademark 205 gear change, it's like stirring soup. but. These three joint linkages are they're easy to get off eBay and replace. And actually, you might have been done. Yeah, there's one that's been done up there, but uh, it shouldn't be too hard to sort that out. Uh, as for the structure of the body, it's a wee bit flaky here, but not. I don't think it's too bad. The under seal's a bit flaky, but it, uh, it doesn't seem like there's been any holes. Again, if there's a bit of weld needed to this car, that's not going to be a problem. The rest of the underbody is quite... The, the floor... The floor is quite good condition. There is a leak in the exhaust in multiple places. Um, which gives it a bit of a noise, but... It's not, the exhaust isn't in too bad, too bad a condition. It actually might weld up that bit that has a hole. Although there's been some interesting work done there. Um, Along the, the inner cells is, is in quite good condition as well. The brake pipes, fuel pipes, they're all fairly fairly sound. There's surface rust on them but nothing nothing serious. Uh, the back axle is all there. They're probably as bushing or the mountains at the top. Uh, the car does feel its age on the road. So it'll be interesting to have the, the the back axle out just to see that, but I don't think there's any problem with the back axle. Although an MOT will an MOT test would find out tell the truth there. Um this is the back bumper. It's plastic on these anyway, so there's no rust there. Um it's sitting at a fairly good height on both sides. And the caps are there for the bolts that hold it in place. Um, yeah, this is the back axle. There's a small amount of tilt in that wheel there. Although there's some on this side too. I'm just not sure. I, I never really was very good at determining if they need need replacement. Although if it does need, it's not going to be the end of the world. It's I am actually the same company that you sold the one for the uh, for the Zara. Uh, they did a good job. So try them again. Uh, the drum brakes in the back, pipes and all seem in good nick. Um, there's nothing to worry about there. There's a spur, which is quite old I think. Um, the rest of the tyres are... I would need tyres on the back then. Um, yeah, the back tyres need to be changed. The front tyres are good here. And they do have still a left good good thread on the front. There's plenty of thread on the front. There's a bit of bind in that wheel there. Caliper might need to be looked at. Um, on the outer shells. A bit of surface rust here. I haven't washed the car yet, that's going to be the first thing to do. There is a hole here so it may possibly fail on this. There is definitely rust in here, but uh, 
that's not the worst thing to try and fix. Wheel arches are shining, showing signs of bubbling, but they're not. There's nothing major. The, the rust hasn't significantly weakened the structure. The inner arches are in good nick. Both sides. Down here, a bit rusty too. But an MOT test would show up what it needs. The top suspension parts are in good condition. A wee bit of flakiness here, but you know, removing the underseal would soon show out, uh, show what needs to be done. Small amount of rust on this arch here would be easy to bring back to bare metal and sort that out. And back back brakes seem to be free enough on the do hold on a hill. Uh, the tyres are quite small actually for compared to for, by modern standards 16570 or 13 which is quite a small tyre. The tow bar and all that I think they're they're not even 60 horsepower but somebody must have towed a bit of paint flaking off the, the lower part of the rear bumper but it's plastic. Nothing, nothing major. Actually, underneath the doors are in very good condition on all four doors. This door has a bit of rust on the bottom edge, but it's off. Underneath that door, just a wee bit of scab here. The driver's door, underneath it's the sound. That's the sill. Under the bonnet, um, first thing I noticed is that this hinge has some strange problem, but it still opens. And they were able in 1985 to figure out how to make the bonnet stay up automatically. This is one of the best systems for keeping the bonnet open. I don't know why they never stuck with that. Um, but this is underneath the, the bonnet. This engine here, I think, had a bit of work done at 190,000 miles. The head was off, and not it wasn't a total rebuild. It had just had head skimmed and put back on. Been a new radiator fitted. The jack seems to live up here. The fuel filter and the primer. Bit of a leak there. There's a few leaks, but they seem just to prevent rust. The bonnet has a wee bit of rust down here, though, in the corner, and the same in that corner there. But it's generally not too bad. The, whatever diesel has leaked out, it's been for the benefit of the bodywork around it. I don't know what this box does. It's possibly the aftermarket central locking system. But with the key bar the way it is, I have to connect the battery if it wired up that way. Not even a switch, the wires are just joined together. So the glow plug light will have been on there for a few seconds. It doesn't take long for these engines to the glow plugs to work. I have a flashing light there, I'm not sure what it's about. To start the car at the moment I have this weird setup where I touch the two wires together. And the car starts right up. The alternator doesn't seem to be charging. <laughs> 